Welcome to this very special episode uh, on our second day of Eid al-Adha al-Mubarak. Uh, we've seen during the past two days beautiful, beautiful uh, ceremonies uh, and Islamic features and definitely the uh, Wa'fa or the Arafat Wa'fa, which is one of the uh, rituals uh, uh, of Islam during Al-Hajj. Uh, or the pilgrimage and uh, we are in very blessed days so uh, happy Eid Adha or great Byron for all Muslims around the globe and in Egypt before we uh, start on let's have a quick break and we'll come back Welcome back, and indeed those blessed days bring about uh, all the uh, true essence of Islam, the mercy, the uh, great uh, blessed or blessings of uh, Islam and the true uh, essence of our uh, uh, great religion. Uh, but tonight, We'll not be speaking about uh, those rituals, but rather we'll be speaking about uh, uh, the developments and an initiative that has brought uh, a true change to the Egyptian uh, face. We'll also be speaking or linking uh, this uh, initiative, great initiative, with the digital Egypt or how it contributes to such a, a, a great initiative because Decent Life, or what we will be speaking about tonight, Decent Life is a true great initiative that has covered almost half of our population and uh, all the urban uh, areas and villages across all the governed rates of Egypt. Over the past few years, Egypt has made significant strides towards the digital also transformation. These efforts had been visible as the country strives towards uh, uh, automating various sectors such as government services, financial institutions, energy vet, um, uh, and uh, all those uh, areas. Also Egypt envisions the future where innovation would be the next frontier and uh, reflects the country's vision 2030 strategy that uh, outlines the end goal of building digital Egypt. And Digital Egypt, that has lots and lots of contribution to all the uh, initiatives that have been uh, uh, made and uh, uh, on the implementation uh, process. One of them is Decent Life. Uh, uh, before we uh, delve into our discussion, let's first, uh, uh, let me first welcome our uh, guests, uh, uh, Dr. Mohamed Azam, board member of the International Association of management of technology. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, thank you and always a pleasure and honor being with you. Thank you so much. My pleasure. And uh, before we start with our discussion, let's first uh, uh, have this report. And Egypt kicks off second stage of Decent Life Initiative in January 23 or starting January 23. Let's watch. <laughs> Egypt started the second stage of the Decent Life Initiative, which comprises a series of countryside-focused national infrastructure projects by January 2023. The second stage of the presidential scheme is planned to cover 1,670 villages countryside to provide services for some 20 million citizens. The Ministry of Local Development and Govern Rates have already determined the needed lands for the second stage's planned projects. The Decent Life National Project was initiated experimentally in 2019 by President Abdel Fattah Sisi and its first phase was officially launched in July 2021. The initiative aims to improve standards of living, infrastructure and basic services, including health care across the countryside, covering 4,658 villages across the country, 
which are home to 58 percent of Egypt's 103 million population. The enormous volume of work needed to develop the selected villages required the initiative to be divided into three stages, with a total estimate budget of 700 billion Egyptian pounds. Prime Minister Dr. Mustafa Madbouli announced last August that the first stage of the initiative that serves 28 million citizens in 1,477 villages is expected to be concluded by December of this year, initially planned to be completed by the 30th of June 2022. The program was delayed by a shortage of raw materials and equipment from abroad owing to the current global circumstances. Some 23,000 projects have started within the scheme's first stage, with the implementation rate hitting over 70 percent, and there are many projects within this stage are ready to be launched and go into operation. The United Nations has praised the initiative as a great and unique program that does not exist in any other country saying it aims to achieve social justice among all Egyptian people, as the three-stage initiative will change the shape of the Egyptian countryside, improve lives of citizens, and make all basic services available. The government indicated that the Decent Life initiative reflects an unprecedented radical transformation of the Egyptian countryside by targeting villages of need in terms on infrastructure, and public services and creating ways to improve income and a decent standard of living for rural communities. According to the government's financial statement, the initiative is the largest development initiative in the history of Egypt, whether in terms of the size of financial allocations, the scope of coverage and the number of beneficiaries or in terms of the integration of development dimensions economically, socially, and environmentally. Right, welcome back, and uh, back to uh, Dr. Azem. And um, speaking about the decent life, decent life under the directives uh, and upon the directives of uh, the uh, president and under his uh, definitely his auspices, the leadership has always co uh, insisted on continuing this huge initiative despite all the challenges facing the country why because it's uh, for the first time we are uh, not leaving anyone behind uh, decent life uh, is the slogan, uh, the slogan. No it's decent life yes. and decent life is not only about uh, having uh, a nice house or having uh, clean water uh, sewage uh, electricity but also uh, includes availing training, um, uh, having a sort of capacity building for our uh, calibers. calibers in uh, rural areas, uh, including uh, availing opportunities to create micro jobs through micro ventures, uh, availing uh, opportunities for people to learn better, availing opportunities for people uh, to be more innovative, uh, to be equipped with uh, uh, skills that is requ are required in the 21st century economy. So it's uh, for the first time we have something is totally inclusive. Yes. This is uh, youth empowering, women empowering, um, and, and, and all these uh, issues beside the infrastructure. Indeed, indeed. Since its launch, the Decent Life Initiative has been playing a critical role in improving the conditions uh, of up to this minute, 58 million? Uh, it's almost like 60% of the population. Yes, and, and the second phase would be covering 22 other millions. How do you view the change of, uh, uh, or, or how life changed within decent life? Uh, again, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for everyone to excel, everyone to prosper. Uh, to have uh, 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 or build uh, a climate that helps everyone uh, to be uh, an effective part within the society. Uh, not empowering people on the social level only, but also on the economic level. Uh, so it includes training, it includes ed education, in it includes uh, creating jobs through having local businesses. Uh, Why don't we start from the beginning? It, it started with decent house, housing. 
Yes, at the beginning, but infrastructure. Uh, yes, exactly. And then went through several processes. This part of the learning process, actually, it's part of the evolution of the of uh, the uh, initiative itself. Yes. Uh, because it was designed from the beginning to have inclusive or holistic approach for having inclusive development. Uh, no one is left behind, uh, uh, and not one not leaving anyone behind is by educating them. Uh, empower them socially and economically, uh, availing um, infrastructure for them, availing uh, even uh, IC skills, uh, availing uh, uh, entrepreneurship opportunities, uh, providing uh, financial and technical support for the people who are interested in uh, uh, starting their own uh, ventures and creating jobs for themselves and for others. So it's for the first time to have this kind of inclusive, holistic approach. This we haven't seen for decades in Egypt. That's why this is considered by the international organization like the World Bank, the United Nations, is one of the most important inclusive initiatives that took place all over the world for the last two decades at least. Mm. Um, from your point of view, um, how does this initiative go in parallel to the uh, Egypt's vision 2030 or, Egypt, or, or, or the vision uh, of 2030 for sustainable development. How does this initiative go in parallel or within the framework of the biggest vision? Uh, actually, if you look at the initiative and its pillars, and uh, th there, uh, they have implemented so many programs, and if you link this with the 17 uh, development goals uh, uh, of the Sustainable Development Goals that was uh, uh, founded by the UN almost uh, 20 years ago, uh, you can find each pillar of this great initiative, the Decent Life Initiative, is matching the sustainable goals of the United Nations, like eradicating poverty, uh, having uh, decent work and economic development, having clean water and sanitation, having uh, better health care and well-being, uh, having uh, a better uh, uh, life for uh, people with disability, uh, having uh, economic uh, empowerment uh, and uh, eradicating inequality within the community, uh, having uh, uh, addressing the climate change directly and indirectly, um, uh, having a sort of sustainable uh, communities and cities. So this, that's why this initiative is really one of the most inclusive initiatives that took place all over the world. And in such developing nations that you need such initiative because you cannot progress the whole the, uh, the, the economy and the society by focusing on urban areas also and forgetting about the rural areas. Today with Decent Life Initiative you are not only focusing on the urban development but also on the rural development and linking things together. This will help you to achieve better economic and social growth. You are availing opportunities for people to advance on the social uh, ladder. You are equipping youth with the required skills that are needed for applying or developing jobs uh, according to the uh, standards of the 21st century. Mm -hmm. you, you can find training, you can find uh, uh, developing programs that helping you uh, to start a small business. You can find uh, a relaxed finance for such uh, micro projects. You can find technical assistant and, uh, and mentorship. You can find uh, a, a lot of uh, opportunities to innovate. Uh, you can find uh, uh, even equipping uh, the villages and the rural areas with the high-speed internet uh, that you're connecting such rural areas with. We'll, we'll speak about this. We'll be focusing okay. on this. But before we uh, uh, transmit into this particular area, let me hear uh, 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 another aim is to, uh, uh, or to achieve development integrated with uh, national industry. Because... Uh, it's it's not just about housing it's not just about education and health and and sanitation and, and services and all this but also also 
it worked on some of the macro and micro uh, uh, projects and also uh, and even some of the SMEs and startups and entrepreneurs and, and encouraging youth to having such issues. So from your point of view, how uh, such uh, an initiative played an important role in supporting the national industry? Uh, this is uh, uh, part of the initiative is called EBDA initiative or START initiative. This is mainly focusing on replacing uh, imported goods with locally manufactured goods and helping uh, the local communities to develop businesses that serving the core competence of such areas and serving the direction of the Egyptian government to boost uh, the exports or replacing imports with locally manufactured goods and services. This is very important because uh, you cannot, uh, if you need to have a holistic approach uh, for developing an economy, cannot depend only on large enterprises. You need also to create a breed of small and medium enterprises and even micro enterprises because all over the world, they are like 80% of the business are SMEs. And the SMEs are responsible for uh, like 50% of the GDP as well as almost 50% of the employment worldwide. Mm -hmm. These figures are higher in Egypt, like uh, actually uh, small and medium enterprises representing here between 60 and 70%. And they are employing also between 60 and 70% of uh, uh, the labor force uh, in the country. So you are availing new opportunities for them to have a focused business that is required by the local community to for consumption. For example, the agribusiness, the food industries, uh, and also you are linking through this initiative the small and medium enterprises and even micro enterprises with the larger players within the ecosystem, like the larger enterprises, with the finance, uh, financing institution, uh, with the, the local administrative for easing uh, the, uh, the procedures or uh, the frameworks that governing the work of small and medium enterprises. Now we have a new law for small and medium enterprises. This law is full of incentives, either financial incentives and non-financial incentives for micro enterprises and small enterprises that are starting businesses that serving uh, the requirements of uh, the local market as well as its ability to have more exports to the regional uh, markets. You can find a low interest rate uh, finance, you can uh, find mentorship and training, you can find uh, business matchmaking with other uh, stakeholders within the ecosystem. Uh, it's a new notion of clustering uh, the small and micro enterprises uh, into more sound and solid economic ecosystem that help them to grow in a, uh, an organic way. Uh, this is wasn't there uh, for years in our uh, economy. We, we are not leaving again anyone behind concerning the business developments and concerning uh, boosting the economic value coming out of small and medium enterprises. Um, speaking about leaving no one behind, President Sisi has always linked uh, uh, the launch of the recent life initiative to the birth of the a new republic. Um, how do you view this linkage? Uh, the new republic is a republic that is based on science, technology and work and efforts towards modernizing the life in Egypt. And you cannot modernize the ecosystem in Egypt unless everyone is included unless you have an inclusive approach because you cannot only focus on large cities to have economic and social development and leaving the rural areas untouched, forgotten. That's why the new republic actually is considering the urban development as well as the rural development equally and even the rural development is considered on the top on, uh, of the agenda of uh, the Egyptian government. And 
here we are not talking about infrastructure alone. We are talking about new universities and education institutions. You are talking about investing in industrial uh, zones. You are talking about uh, uh, creating uh, small ventures that are connected to the large uh, players within the economic ecosystem. You are giving them direction for producing goods and services that are required by the local market and uh, minimizing the, ex the imports of, uh, uh, of goods and services that cause us a, a fortune of uh, hard currency. Uh, you are making such uh, small and medium enterprises as feeding industries for other larger industries. So you have the 360 degree uh, holistic uh, overview and you are implementing this on the ground. Uh, and, and the new republic is a republic that is considering everyone and availing the tools and the opportunity for everyone. And if you look at even uh, the startups, the, the youth, uh, we've seen a great number of, uh, of examples of youngsters with great ideas coming from universities uh, from rural areas. In Upper Egypt or in Delta, you would be amazed how they are creative, how they are innovative, how they are bringing solutions to the table rather than uh, challenges or problems. Very much indeed. Um, before we continue on with our discussion, because our discussion uh, or, or our upcoming discussion would be how the new approach of Egypt for science and technology and the digital transformation would be applied or has contributed to initiatives such as Decent Life. But before we uh, uh, continue on with our discussion, let's first have this report and boosting economic progress through digital transformation in Egypt. Let's watch. Egypt has been adopting a robust strategy and strong course of action in transforming the existing government services and community ecosystem to an entirely digital and data-driven ecosystem to provide public services in a faster and simpler way. The new Egypt will possess a competitive, balanced and diversified economy dependent on innovation and acknowledge and based on justice, social integrity and participation. It will be characterized by a balanced and diversified ecological collaboration system, investing the ingenuity of place and humans to achieve sustainable development and to improve Egyptians' life quality. The dimensions of the sustainable development strategy comprise three dimensions including the economic dimension, which highlights economic development, transparency and efficiency of governmental institutions, energy and knowledge. The social dimension highlights education and training, health, culture and social justice, while the environmental dimension focuses on environment and urban development. ICT 2030 strategy contributes to achieving the objectives of Egypt's Vision 2030 through building Digital Egypt. These objectives entail developing the ICT infrastructure, fostering digital inclusion, achieving the transition to a knowledge-based economy, building capacities and encouraging innovation, fighting corruption, ensuring cyber security and promoting Egypt's position at the regional and international levels. Digital Egypt is an all-encompassing vision and plan which lays the foundations for the transformation of Egypt into a digital society. Digital Egypt strategy is built on three main planks including digital transformation, digital skills and jobs and digital innovation. These three pillars are standing on two extremely important bases, digital infrastructure and legislative framework. Egypt has also launched the National Artificial Intelligence AL strategy to exploit such technology to attain the country's sustainable development goals 
play a key role in facilitating regional cooperation within the African and Arab regions and establish Egypt as an active international player in AL. This is within the framework of Egypt's keenness as advancement in technology continue to evolve every day. The Egyptian Supreme Cybersecurity Council, ESCC, reporting to the Cabinet of Ministers and chaired by the Ministers of Communications and Information Technology, has launched the National Cybersecurity Strategy 2017-2021 aiming to provide a safe and secure environment that would enable various sectors to deliver integrated e-services in line with the state's efforts to support national security and develop the Egyptian society. Right, welcome back and uh, back to Dr. Azam and um, as we were speaking just before the report and how um, uh, the um, digital Egypt or digital transformation because I guess that uh, uh, digitization and then digital transformation and it, it has several uh, uh, and, and different uh, parts right until we reach that but before I go into into this very very specific issue let me here ask you how the digital transformation has helped initiatives such as Decent Life? Uh, thank you for this question. Uh, actually, you are availing uh, high-speed internet now to uh, the villages and cities in rural areas. Uh, this including the fiber optics cables as well as uh, the 4G or the fourth generation uh, uh, mobile networks. This one thing. The second one is you are uh, uh, providing uh, training, uh, technical training for youth and, uh, and even uh, for uh, many different segments within uh, the rural areas mm. uh, to equip them with the uh, ICT skills that is required for the job market. Uh, actually, a couple of days ago, uh, Egypt won uh, Prince Talal Prize, EG Fund Prize. This is a very prestigious uh, prize. Um, and uh, Egypt won this uh, prize uh, for uh, or awarded to the Ministry of uh, uh, Information and Communication Technology because uh, the ministry had uh, a great initiative, great, a sort of great uh, initiatives mm -hmm. that are addressing uh, the pillar number eight with the uh, SDGs, which is uh, uh, decent work as well as um, uh, economic development. Uh, because you are availing uh, uh, so many initiatives for women, uh, how, to, how to use uh, ICT to boost their businesses. You are availing training uh, for uh, women, girls, uh, people with disabilities, and, uh, and, um, uh, and youth for uh, having the, the right or the proper ICT skills that would help them to enter the job market. You having a special program uh, for uh, people with disability and how ICT would help uh, creating more solutions to help people with disability to live uh, a, a normal life uh, and to have more of an inclusive approach for them within the society. Uh, now, uh, again, uh, by availing also the government services, the public services, uh, to all over the country uh, with the same level, with the same standards, w with the same level of uh, maturity and, uh, and simplicity. You wouldn't be able to do this unless you have a platform like Digital uh, Egypt uh, platform. One uh, of the achievements of uh, Egypt's te uh, technology or approach towards technology is definitely Egypt uh, Digital Egypt. And also there is a, uh, an initiative called AHMUS for redesigning all the public uh, procedures and public services to become more easier, more direct to uh, benefiting uh, the, uh, the citizens all over uh, the country as well as small businesses. So you are always moving forward. Uh, and that's why uh, ICT is touching uh, Decent Life uh, initiative because uh, availing ICT services is part of having a decent uh, life because in wherever you are, 
in urban area or in a big city or a small village you would be able to have the same quality of service regardless where you are uh, and wherever you are you are be able to have the proper training to enter the job market uh, and to be a part of the incubation process if you are a startup working in high-tech domain we've seen uh, a lot of innovation centers a lot of incubation uh, centers uh, that are around the country and many of them are in rural areas and rural governates uh, and we've seen uh, great uh, uh, startups are coming from such governance uh, availing or presenting great uh, and sound uh, solutions uh, for the chances you are facing here mm -hmm. so it's all connected and of course uh, uh, ICT is always uh, the main driver or the locomotive for any development even in rural areas and even in rural areas uh, it's more important to include such uh, high-tech services uh, to the people over there to help them to have a better quality of life and to have uh, a better opportunity to join uh, the job market that needs specific uh, high-tech skills for example mm. so you are availing a lot of uh, services not only in the format of infrastructure but also uh, of providing the the public services uh, for uh, uh, citizens in rural areas as well as helping the startup community over there to come up with decent okay. uh, ideas and projects. Let me here take uh, <coughs> uh, that in nine years, Egypt has been able to achieve some very uh, wide strides of achievements, particularly in this area. One of them, as you said, respectively, is digital in Egypt, but also there are several other uh, achievements. And we're speaking here about uh, 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 in the health uh, uh, system, economic wise banking wise and and, and, and different uh, uh, definitely we spoke about the decent life and the initiatives and collecting database so we can really uh, 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 apply uh, the initiatives or those uh, uh, social initiative in the proper way Egypt has been adopting a robust strategy and 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 and, and strong course action for the transformation into uh, uh, into uh, uh, in, or the digitization of the country till the full transformation uh, digital transformation uh, how do you uh, uh, perceive the Egyptian state's efforts in in this domain or in this direction so far uh, again you are uh, now implementing a holistic approach inclusive approach because uh, and also ICT is playing a key role on advancing the other sectors like the healthcare. Uh, but uh, now you can use ICT for providing uh, uh, telemedicine services. You don't have to go to a consultant to get the service, and you can, uh, but using this kind of telemedicine or remote uh, medicine, collecting data about uh, patients and, and people, and even providing uh, the the medical service uh, online through this kind of uh, equipment by using. Uh, 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 this kind of uh, telemedicine thing uh, to have a better diagnosis for many diseases and even provide um, the technical advice from the top consultants in this domain uh, remotely. So this is one of the part that is uh, playing, uh, ICT is playing a key role in such thing. Can we speak about the 100 million lives uh, 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 uh. Uh, initiative. initiative. Definitely. As part of that, can we speak about uh, um, 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 the uh, uh, health or, or the, 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 the data of, uh, of people around uh, in all Egypt that helped us terminate a virus C, for instance? Can we really put the relevance between that and, 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 and the strategy of, of Egypt towards digital? Uh, transformation uh, definitely because you cannot plan unless you have data uh, uh, in the past uh, you don't have this kind of uh, data you don't have a map to plan for you don't have uh, uh, you haven't collected data about uh, no. the health uh, map all over the country uh, so if you have the data 
you can analyze the data and you have a better planning. Uh, again, uh, by using technology for health, you don't have uh, to go to the consultant or the specialized doctor uh, unless you have to. Uh, and in rural areas, it's very hard to commute to uh, specialized doctors because all over the world they are mainly uh, uh, they are in the major sets. By using the telemedicine or the, mo the remote uh, uh, medicine uh, techniques, uh, you can uh, have one-to-one -one meeting with your uh, physician remotely with the top consultants. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go there. You can uh, uh, have a, a sort of uh, uh, examinations and a sort of uh, analysis of your viable uh, uh, items and viable uh, uh, indicators. And the consultant remotely can see it and advise with the case and the right medication. Uh, so part of the initiatives that are taking place between, in, in a full collaboration between Ministry of Information Technology uh, and the Ministry of Health is the telemedicine thing. And this is, is uh, like magic in rural areas because you, you are saving cost, you are saving time, as well as you are uh, providing uh, high quality services uh, at uh, very competitive uh, cost, which is uh, you need it in, uh, uh, for providing quality service all over the country in a decent way. So, of course, they are connected. All those ICT is serving so many sectors and, of course, healthcare sectors uh, on the top of the sectors that are uh, served by uh, the ICT sector. And definitely health as education, but economy. Because uh, um, economy has different uh, uh, um, segments that the uh, digital transformation has enormous impact on please illustrate uh, this one of the great thing actually because uh, um, you can help the non-technical people to learn about the basic ICT skills that they need for digital market for example if I'm a household I'm producing handcrafts for example uh, I need to create proper content and having this con uh, content to be uploaded uh, on a platform for e-commerce uh, or even uh, generate or publish it on a page on Facebook, on, on Instagram or uh, uh, other social, social media platforms. Uh, so you need to know the skills. So there is a, a specific program for training that helping people in rural areas to equip themselves with the right credentials and right skills to use technology to promote their business. This one thing. The other thing is training for youth, students in the higher education or even in high schools to become the next generation developers, programmers, uh, equipping them with the skills that is required to uh, be a part of the artificial intelligence business or the augmented reality business or digital arts business. So it's this kind of training is availed for people in rural areas as well as in uh, people in urban areas mm. to enter this very promising, very sophisticated job market. But that is on the small scale. But I'm speaking also about the, the huge scales. And I mean here, smart cities, I mean here, economy, the one-stop shop uh, that we've seen. We're speaking here about uh, uh, lots of banking procedures, portals for all the institutions and uh, governmental uh, uh, institutions and ministries and all that. How, how, how was that part of the, 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 the whole out uh, uh, vision of Egypt? Uh, of course, uh, smart cities is not becoming an option anymore because uh, actually uh, cities are aging like human beings and smart cities is based on having state-of-the-art infrastructure to help you to have a better quality of life for citizens and businesses. 
uh, to have better impact on environments, to lessen the carbon footprint, uh, to be able to predict the maintenance procedures for all utilities and uh, infrastructure and all transportation system within the, the city. So we'll be able to predict any failure you and then have intervention this is saving a lot of uh, uh, cost um, uh, and of course uh, giving you an opportunity to have a better environment for people to live and for business to excel this one thing the other thing is you are having by this kind of transformation or digital transformation actually we are excelling in this uh, domain uh, there is a report launched by the world bank a few weeks ago Egypt now among the top countries that implemented technology for availing public services to citizens and businesses. We are among the top countries. Uh, this We were among the uh, most uh, progressing countries almost a year ago. This is uh, in last November, we were uh, in the class B. Now we are in class A uh, when it comes to availing services or public services to the to the citizen and public sector and the world bank is considered as is one of the countries that are converting even from the digital transformation to what's called government tech government tech is not a one-way communication between you and your citizen it's citizen and business are becoming co-creator of value because you are considering their feedback you are co you are you are uh, adopting open data approach you are helping them to redesign uh, the services that are uh, or the kind old services are provided to the community uh, so it's becoming uh, more of a dynamic approach rather than a static one-way uh, approach. So this is, will help you to have uh, the one-stop shop because now everything is integrated and seamlessly and you, are, you don't have to go from one place to another. Uh, all the services will be connected. That's why uh, AHMOS initiative is part of redesigning and reconnecting all services uh, together. Uh, and, and now maybe you have 168 services, but tomorrow you will have definitely more than 200 services uh, till you have all services availed uh, using Egypt, uh, Digital Egypt platform. Uh, this you are educating bureaucracy, uh, uh, red tape, uh, corruption, uh, saving uh, time, saving uh, uh, money. And of course, you are playing a great uh, game in, uh, when it comes to the financial inclusion. Uh, now we are almost 60% uh, uh, included in the financial services. And that was my second uh, common question. How would the digital transformation uh, 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 could be part and partial of financial inclusion that we really need to get into very, uh, uh, very rapidly? Uh, actually, because you are using technology, now we have uh, the platform, we have uh, your mobile. 98% of Egyptians are using smartphones. Uh, and they are uh, like 75% of the population are connected to the internet. Uh, the number of people included in the financial system raised from almost 30% a few years ago and now is almost 60%. Uh, the number of mobile wallets is increasing uh, uh, in a dramatic way. Actually, we are like 30% of the population using mobile wallets and another 30% they are using uh, prepaid cards. So you are equipping people with the uh, all uh, instruments that helps you to be financially included and this of course is helping the digital transformation because digital part of the digital transformation is to have electronic payment uh, and include everyone in the, fi in the official financial uh, system that because you are easing things I don't have to have the uh, the services online then I pay in cash this is will be history uh, eventually and very soon I have only two uh, minutes left for me here for this episode and uh, um, um, I, I really want to ask you about how to protect uh, this or what we have achieved and, and, and this issue concerning the cyber security in two minutes. Okay. I uh, know it needs one, ep one more episode but in uh, two uh, minutes. Of course, uh, cyber security is becoming uh, on the top of the agenda of uh, governments all over the world. 
uh, has the size of investment uh, hundreds of billions every year. Uh, the, it's becoming part of the national security. Uh, so as Egypt, we are investing in, uh, in cyber security. We have uh, the National Council for Cyber Security, and we are developing so many uh, cyber security applications in-house uh, by Egyptians. And you are protecting uh, the government uh, services, and you are protecting the financial sector services uh, by state-of-the-art uh, protection and security measures uh, up to the international standards. And you are investing a lot in, in such a uh, domain and this domain of course uh, it's the future uh, for uh, protecting our frontiers in the cyberspace right i guess our time is out and i have to end it here i i, I know that this needs more and more episodes but dr mohammed azam board member of the international association of management uh, uh, in, uh, of technology thank you so much for being with us a happy Eid Adha for you and all your beloved Thank you so much and happy Eid Adha for all Egyptians and you loved ones. Thank you so much. And uh, that takes us to the end of this episode. Uh, again, happy Eid Adha for um, our dear audience in Egypt and in the whole world and may it be very blessed days.